everybody, welcome to Anna's Pastry Kitchen and thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to go back to the mid-1970s. I pulled a recipe out of my recipe box for Watergate cake, what a classic. Made popular in the mid-1970s. Uh, named after either the Watergate scandal of the Nixon presidency or just made popular by the Watergate Hotel in Washington, D.C. I'm not really sure, but I've read quite a few fun little things online about why this cake was named the Watergate cake. Some people say the icing is called impeachment icing because it covers up any mistakes. The cake has a lot of nuts in it, much like politics. So that is just a little background on Watergate cake. So. Um, it calls for a white cake mix, and I will say that I do not mind using a cake mix. I think Duncan Hines is especially good, and uh, it's, it ends up making a very moist cake, and it's easy. Um, it also calls for a box of pistachio pudding, instant, so the cake ends up being green. Um, so we've got the pistachio pudding, and then it also calls for ginger ale in the cake or 7-Up, uh, some sort of soda. And then the icing uses Dream Whip, which honestly I haven't used this in years, but this is a shelf-stable whipped topping mix. So it mimics whipped cream or Cool Whip, shelf-stable, can't hurt to have it on hand in case you need to whip up a whipped cream product. Um, so stay tuned, this is going to be so much fun. In the next portion of the video, I want to show you how I grease my bump pan. Nothing worse than having a cake stick to your bump pan. So stay tuned for more. Okay, I'm speeding things up a little bit. Just want to show you that I'm using softened butter to grease uh, the bump pan. I'm getting in all the nooks and crannies here, taking a little bit of time to make sure it's well uh, buttered or well greased. Uh, the worst thing in the world is having your cake stick to your pan when you try to invert it so I'm doing a good job and then I'm using almond flour it's got a little bit larger grain I think it will help the cake pop out a little easier instead of using white flour so I'm coating the inside of the pan with that and then I'll tap any extra or um, excess flour into the sink or the trash looks good Okay, everybody, so I have greased and floured my pan. I kind of like the way this almond flour is working so far, so we'll see. Fingers crossed. Um, so in this, in my mixing bowl here, I've added um, the cake mix and the box of instant pistachio pudding. I've poured that in there. Um, now I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients and we'll stir it up. Um, it calls for one cup of ginger ale. What a fun recipe. Um, by the way, back in the 70s, there was also a Watergate salad that was absolutely not a salad. It had like pistachio pudding and it had pineapple and it had um, marshmallows and it was just so sweet. And, you know, a little bit disgusting, but they called it the Watergate salad. Um, anyway, the good old 70s. So next I'll add three eggs. And I do like to um, break my eggs into a little bowl ahead of time in case you have a bad egg, you don't want to crack it directly into your batter. In my entire life of baking, I think it's happened once or twice where I actually had a bad egg. Um, and then next up I'm going to add one cup of vegetable oil, some uh, healthy and delicious ingredients, right? And we're not too worried about healthy at the moment, as you can tell. So there is a cup of vegetable oil. That's kind of a lot of vegetable oil. No wonder this cake is so good. All right, so I'll keep that mixing. It's a light green color. It's going to be fabulous. It's bringing back memories for me. And uh, I cannot wait to have a piece of Watergate cake tonight. I'm trying to figure out what to do with all this cake. I might do porch pickup for, for neighbors. Just get the word out. We'll see. I sure don't need to have a whole cake sitting here. 
Okay, so I mixed the uh, batter here for about four minutes on medium, and the last step for the cake is I'll add a half a cup of chopped nuts. I wanted to also just mention my uh, Pampered Chef chopper. Such an essential tool in the kitchen. I really love this chopper. And I also wanted to show you my very favorite cutting board. This is an Epicurean cutting board. I just like the way it looks and feels. It's thin, it washes up really nice. It's very durable. Um, I just really, really like this Epicurean cutting board. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a half a cup of chopped pecans. And I'm not gonna mix it much longer, just until it gets mixed in. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and scoop this into our cake pan and put it in the oven. Of course, I have my spatula here. Um, let's go ahead and do this. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and pour this cake mix so easy and so delicious. Um, nice green color, don't you think? Off we go to the races. We've got our Watergate cake with pistachio pudding and pecans ready to go in the oven. Okay, my timer went off. It's been 45 minutes. I'm going to pull the cake out and check it. And it looks like I have help from the dogs here. Um, it looks good. You know, one test is if it springs back when you touch it. It's done, so it looks done to me. I'm also going to go ahead and put up this long, thin knife, and it comes out clean. So the cake is done. It looks beautiful. We did a good job. I'm going to let it cool for about um, 10 to 15 minutes and then invert it onto a plate. Okay, so I've cooled my cake uh, for about 15 minutes. I'm going to run this butter knife around the edge. And it's a little, you know, kind of ins and outs because of the bunt pan, um, but you know, loosen it a little. I'm also gonna see if I can get down in the center without like cutting into the cake. All right, and now we are gonna cross our fingers and say a prayer, and we're gonna see if that lovely cake will invert onto this pretty platter that I want to show you really quick. Um, since this is my grandmother's recipe for Watergate cake, I'm using a platter that my grandmother painted. So she used to paint china. So there you go. Um, and now we'll just take this. Take this. It's a little heavier than I thought. I'm going to put it on the top. And then we're going to go like that. I am so glad. I'm very relieved. I think that almond flour was a good choice. So there it is. We'll let it cool and then I'll go ahead and put the frosting on. I'm so excited. Okay, we're back. Here's the cake. You saw it before. It's cooled for about an hour or so. You don't want to spread this um, frosting on it or icing on it when it's warm. So in this, in the mixer bowl, I put one packet of my um, Dream Whip, so fun. I have three quarters of a cup of milk that I'm putting in. And last but not least, I'm gonna add half a packet of this instant pistachio pudding. So, no idea what I'll do with the other half of the packet. But there we go. So this is gonna be some green frosting here. And uh, I might add just a teeny little bit of vanilla. Fun. Why not? Okay, a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of pistachio, a little dream whip. It's going to be good. So I also toasted pecans in the oven and I toasted some sweetened shredded coconut so that we can sprinkle that on top of the cake after we frost it. So that's going to take a couple minutes. I'll come back in just a minute and uh, you can watch me ice our Watergate cake. All right, so I whipped up the Dream Whip and the pistachio pudding. Look at that, it's light green. You know, I was thinking this would be a fabulous cake for St. Patty's Day. It's so green and it's 
sort of fluffy. It just seems like a leprechaun would love this cake. Um, so I don't have a, a, a huge game plan here. I'm just, I like putting the frosting on the top and then I'll spread it with my um, cake spatula and then I'll sprinkle some nuts and coconut on top. Um, all right, there we go with that. And so I'm just gonna like spread it around the sides. Roll it off the top. Doesn't have to be perfect. You know, it's nice that we'll have a little sprink something to sprinkle on the top. So that kind of makes it look fancy and finished. Um, this part is far from perfect. You're just getting this yummy, fluffy icing spread around. And then we'll, um, we'll sprinkle it. So when I was looking through my recipe box and found the recipe for a Watergate cake, I also found a note that I left my mom when I was six. It says, Anna, age six. And it says, Anna, come home at 5.30. So imagine that at age six. I went out to play and left my mom a note. That's pretty fun. Um, so I'm gonna do nuts across the whole thing. And I'll probably do coconut on half because not everybody in my house likes coconut. And that's okay. Some of us do and some of us don't. All right, there's your nuts. And I toasted these chopped pecans in the oven and I also toasted the coconut. All right, there's your Watergate cake. It looks delicious. Thanks for joining me, everybody. It's been really fun. Thanks for joining me on this trip down memory lane. Hope to see you soon.